Ladies and gentlemen, it is Sunday, the fifth day of May, 2013, and Deep Purple is bringing us in today. Smoke on the water, fire in the sky. There is certainly smoke on the water and fire in the sky uh, in and around Syria. Syria, the ancient uh, country that's had Jews, Christians, and then Muslims living in it. Jews living there for 3,000 plus years. Christians living there for 2,000 uh, years or so. Uh, now about a third of the country or more is under Al-Qaeda control. They fly Al-Qaeda flags. And they are being armed with heavy weapons. Heavy weapons. Uh, heavy missiles, uh, medium-sized um, artillery, grenade launchers, uh, and anti-aircraft weapons. And they have been shooting up aircraft uh, trying to take off the international airport in Damascus. Uh, Israel has engaged in another wave of bombings across the country, bombing military bases and uh, other strategic locations. And again, ladies and gentlemen, when I sit here and I see this, it's like the twilight zone. Because this is not my opinion. When Paul Watson came out with the headline, Document Cam Plays for TV Viewers, again, it's a syndicated radio show, but we're streaming video at infowars.com forward slash listen, and of course, also at prisonplanet.tv. Uh, Israel helps its Al-Qaeda ally with attack on Syria. Tel Aviv emboldens Western backed jihadists. Now, the Council on Foreign Relations, the LA Times, all of them, the New York Times have had to admit. We've been reporting it for 26, 27 months, but over the last year, they've had to admit, yes, the West in Libya and now in Syria is importing actual Al-Qaeda, people that call themselves Al-Qaeda out of, out of Saudi Arabia. I guess if Saudi Arabia is involved in another attack like 9-11, maybe we'll just attack Syria. I, I mean, this is kind of, or maybe Canada. That's what this has turned into. That's how stupid the corporate mainstream media thinks you are out there and so that's our top story today as the end of a week when the obama administration signaled its intention to send heavy weaponry to al-qaeda led syrian rebels israel launched air strikes inside syrian territory that will only serve to embolden jihadist militants who have openly espoused their desire to destroy both israel and the united states we have links to videos where they were in Libya a year ago or two years ago or so, and they said with signs on BBC, next stop, Syria, next stop, Washington. And Washington is like, that's right, have more heat-seeking missiles from Benghazi. The ambassador didn't like it, so he got hit. <clears throat> and they're saying, uh, don't worry, don't worry, here's all the weapons you could ever want. And people are saying, well, what does that mean? There's a global crime syndicate that controls NATO and the major Western governments, and it is using Al-Qaeda to overthrow secular governments that are not bothering anybody and are creating stability in the Middle East because they want divide and conquer. Since the time of Julius Caesar, in his book he wrote The Battle for Gaul, it's a collection of letters he wrote back uh, to the region of the Senate, they describe how to divide and conquer and play groups against each other. And I've talked to a lot of good old boys that go, yeah, we'll fund the Arabs to kill each other. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. The globalists hate you more than they hate the Arabs. They hate anybody that's been sovereign, anybody that's been independent, anybody that they don't control. This is not America doing this. This is the global crime syndicate that has seized control of our government doing it. And they have kicked out more than 20 members of the Joint Chiefs and their adjuncts just in the last three years, including the head of CENTCOM repeatedly and the head of the Mediterranean Fleet, and the list goes on because they said no to giving heat-seeking missiles by the thousands to Al-Qaeda. And the decision has been made at the Club of Rome and the Bilderberg Group and the Council on Foreign Relations and publicly in France and England and, and at the NATO Council and, and the uh, U.N. Secretary General, the decisions have been made in Washington that you are so stupid that they can put al-Qaeda in Libya and Syria and al-Qaeda light, give control to the Muslim Brotherhood 
created by British intelligence, taken over by Hitler, turned over to Western intelligence, the CIA, in 1946 after World War II. And that's what I'm telling you. Then when Al-Qaeda shoots down U.S. and European jetliners, we will be on the news when this happens, going, hey, our government funded Al-Qaeda. Here they are at Benghazi giving them the 10,000-plus heat seekers. It's like 18,000 missiles total, 10,000 heat seekers. That's been in the news. And when all this happens, it'll be all over the headlines. Alex Jones, the scum. Alex Jones, the garbage. Alex Jones, the anti-American, lies and says our government gave the missiles to Al-Qaeda. When Benghazi happened months ago, I had Wayne Madsen, who's been to Libya over and over again, former with the NSA on. I had Colonel Anthony Schaefer, who ran black ops in the Pentagon and could have killed bin Laden repeatedly, but was told to stand down on the show. I had Webster Griffin Tarpley. I had countless experts. Uh, I had uh, Dr. Steve Pachinik, former head of black ops for the State Department, over the CIA. I had them all on, and they all concurred. And, and, and Schaefer made statements saying uh, he agreed it was basically looked like a hit on the ambassador. He got so much heat, he asked that we walk that back. We need to get him back on, by the way. But the point is is that here it is, Benghazi names of whistleblower witnesses revealed. So they're now trying to go after the whistleblowers, and they now put people in jail who report federal crimes. Obama has done things nobody's ever done before. It's just incredible. The Benghazi talking points and how they were changed to obscure the truth. Weekly Standard. Official. CBS News. We knew Benghazi was terror attack from the get-go. Yeah, they had two Predator drones and a C-130 out of Italy over it the whole time it happened. It was on record the Al-Qaeda group. The West brought in Al-Qaeda, more than 60,000 of them, into Benghazi over the border of Egypt. And Mubarak wouldn't go along with this. That's why they took Mubarak, uh, Hazim Mubarak, the U.S.-backed dictator, 31 years out. See, it's a chain reaction. Egypt borders in North Africa. <clears throat> uh, to the uh, west is... Uh, Libya and its capital of Tripoli, next to that's Tunisia. And so he wouldn't go along with that. He said, I'm not going to help that. So they basically arrested him, drugged him up for the fake trial. He had a stroke member. That's why he couldn't be there. Kind of like the other, you know, Patsy Bomber in Boston, you know, gets out of the boat, no blood. Next, oh, his throat's been cut out. <laughs> but he confessed to us, though you'll never hear him talk. <laughs> I mean, just the essence essence of authoritarianism and again the globalists are running these people so mubarak says two plus years ago i'm not part of this boom he disappears boom they bring in 50 to 60 thousand of these uh, jihadis actual al-qaeda out of qatar saudi arabia other areas with weapons out of egypt into libya and again no fan of Gaddafi, but he was working with the west the last eight years before that it was investing his money in major western banks Invested his money with uh, Sarkozy. That's why we predicted he'd be arrested later, which they've now gone after him. So he basically financed Sarkozy into office. But the issue was that, 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 that once they were there in Benghazi, it came out day one, that the group that killed him was the Benghazi security force hired and funded by NATO and the CIA. They had a weapons cache at that torture center. And so everybody on the ground, Navy SEAL, CIA, at, at a torture base a half mile away, they were ordered, hundreds of U.S. troops, do not go help. Don't leave your torture dungeon. That continued under Obama. That's now come out. Just stand down. For eight hours, they watched five security people plus two SEALs that didn't follow orders hold off more than 300 al-Qaeda sent to murder the ambassador and blow the place up. And by the way, I told you that months ago. It's now come out mainstream news. Weekly Standard, CBS News, uh, you name it. They think you're too stupid to even understand what you're reading. Okay? Eight hours. The fleet was just 30 miles away off the coast. They sat there and watched it happen. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat.
plus the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. And the general public is very childlike. And look at people I watch, folks in public. And they are so simple-minded. They have no idea what they're facing. And that's why the ruling class globally is so incredibly ruthless. They've gotten away with so much. And now they're getting away with things that I would have thought unthinkable. You know, I was thinking during the break... When has our government and other Western governments funded a group like Al-Qaeda publicly to not fight Russian troops like the 1980s, but to go in and, and blow up mosques and blow up neighborhoods and make fathers, Christian fathers and others, suicide bomb or they'll kill their families? I mean, that's all admitted. And attack a country for 26, 27 months and then say that country that lays there and takes it Syria is the bad guy. I mean, they must think you're incredibly dumb. And I was thinking, when has our government done something that over-the-top naked? And it's Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge in the 70s. It's a big new Brzezinski. I've read the book he wrote about it. Bragged that, in fact, the quote, you could pull up something like, it would be unthinkable for us to kill 30% of the Cambodians, but I could fund Pol Pot to do it. Millions of people, just every field after field of skulls, what's well, called the killing fields. Our government did that, and it's on record. He's a rock star on C-SPAN when he goes to the CFR. They admire guys. that They see that as strong, as cold-blooded, as, as cool. And they took those families out, and they just shot them in the head. Anyone who was educated. And then I thought about Madeleine Albright, and I want to find this clip. We played it before, but I was telling an Esquire writer about it, and he didn't believe it. But maybe you can even find it, John. Madeline, I know we played it like a month ago. Madeleine Albright talks about dead Iraqi children, or says, I mean, the actual quote on, on NBC Nightline, or no, it, it was NBC Dateline, was, um, are 600-plus thousand dead Iraqis, most of them children from the sanctions and the war, this is before the second war in 2003, is that a good price to pay for security in the region? And she said, yes, it is a good price to pay. It's a famous quote. But our government put Saddam Hussein in power. That's declassified. They trained him in 1959 as a uh, CIA agent in Egypt. He was trained for three years from 40, from 56 to 59. Look it up. They, the West staged a coup to put him in in 79, gave him almost $40 billion we know of to start a war with Iran. And you're like, well, that's how we get them Iranians. The globalists don't like you either. But you will go along with overthrowing the Iranian government in 53 and putting the Shah in, and then overthrowing him and putting the Muslim uh Shiites in. Oh, yeah, that's on record. They put the Abdel Khomeini in. Then they did the Iran-Contra deal with him a year later. Oh, yeah, he's our enemy. I'm not saying they even work for each other. It's just that, you know, it's like our government gave nuclear reactors in North Korea in the mid-90s. ABB, Donald Rumsfeld, look it up. Clinton was involved, too. Bipartisan. It's, it's totally cold-blooded Machiavellianism of end justifies the means, but the means isn't keep America free, keep America strong. That would still be immoral. That's how they get people to do bad things. Oh, we torture to keep America free. We've got to be more evil than the evil guys. That's how the devil talks, folks. And I sat there this morning and Paul was doing an article and I was working on it with him a little bit. And he said, what do you think the headline ought to be? And I said, well, Israel, I said, Twilight Zone, Israel backs Al-Qaeda rebels in Syria. 
Well, he went with the headline, Israel helps its al-Qaeda ally with attack on Syria and says, well, we think Hezbollah out of Iran might have been bringing them some missiles, so we did this. Folks, they're blowing up military bases and killing key leadership. When they bombed them a few months ago, I said that, that they weren't bombing chemical weapons, and it turned out they weren't. They were killing military leadership. Israel, along with NATO, see, because NATO is held back because the media and people are telling the truth, so it's so outrageous to bomb a country, plus the UN Security Council, because of Russia's veto, hasn't authorized this, and everybody knows about WMD lies. Syria legally has their WMDs, the U.S. has them as well, chemical weapons. Syria's like, we'll never use these. We're sitting here letting you attack us, knowing you want to bait us into a war. Assad said that two weeks ago in a speech. He said, you're using al-Qaeda against us, and this is going to come back to haunt you. And he said, he, read the whole speech. He said, the American people need to know, when you get your jet, jet liners, it's come out in leaks. They listen to the show. The Syrian government does. They don't even have that good of intelligence because they're not full spectrum. It came out in British news that Assad reads InfoWars. But the point is, he came out and said, when they attack you with the missiles that you got, that you gave them in, 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 in um, Libya, it's going to come back on you. And he said, American people, this is evil. Don't be part of this. And, 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 and you know, when you read Reuters, it was headline, Assad says U.S. will pay for backing al-Qaeda in Syria. And then the article admitted, well, we do back them. It's true, but it's, it's for a good cause. But didn't give you the full transcript. Go read it. That was like a week ago, two weeks ago. Guys, will you type in for viewers that are watching on TV, not just listening, type in, or for listeners, so the listeners can do it. Type in, Assad says America will regret backing al-Qaeda in Syria. That's the exact headline, Reuters. The point is, is that I get up here for new listeners. They've run national headlines the last two weeks going, Alex Jones says Obama's the head of al-Qaeda. How insane is that? Rachel Maddow said that and others. Well, let me just show you the article they referenced right here that's got them so freaked out. Obama now, global head of al-Qaeda, Paul Watson, Alex Jones, March 21st, will president order drone strike on White House? And we said that saying, well, you know, he says he's launches drone strikes on al-Qaeda. The truth is he runs al-Qaeda. So the article was written as a direct message to them that, hey, come on, you know you're running al-Qaeda. If you wanted to go after al-Qaeda, you'd go after yourself, though we wish you a long, healthy life. President Obama is now the global head of al-Qaeda, bankrolling, arming, and equipping terrorists around the world in order to achieve his administration's geopolitical objectives, while simultaneously invoking the threat of terrorists domestically to destroy the Bill of Rights. And it goes through more than 15 links to mainstream media admitting the entire thing. Yeah, there it is. Assad says West will pay for backing al-Qaeda in Syria. And what is that, MSNBC? Yeah, NBC News, NBC News, World News. Yeah, and they ran Reuters. Okay, there you go. Boom, for TV viewers, okay? Karzai comes out and says, the West is staging bombings and runs al-Qaeda to destabilize us. Reuters. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com and by the way, there's no way the global elite, no matter how much police state security they set up, are going to get away with what they're doing. That's not how the universe works. Their own people will bring them down. I, I, I mean, I look at uh, the last two French presidents have been raided and are on the verge of being indicted. I look at how they set up their other guy, all the stuff happening in England, all the stuff happening in America, the Rothschilds and so much political trouble. 
the Rockefellers, all of them, you're not going to get away with this. Nobody rides for free. What comes around goes around. You reap what you sow. Let me just go back to the document cam for TV viewers. Radio listeners can search these terms. We're going to have open phones in the second hour and a bunch of news I haven't even gotten to yet. Osama bin Laden-like villain in Iron Man 3 portrayed as British actor. And guess what? Iron Man is fighting a terrorist. Isn't that just sweet? So see, every movie I go see that's an action movie, almost every movie, they're fighting imaginary terrorists. But in the real world, in the real world, not in Hollywood, the globalists are the terrorists. They run America and they created about 100 years ago in what is Saudi Arabia today. The British created the Wahhabist, created Saudi Arabia. Lawrence of Arabia is the story of that and put them in power. And they are now saying we've got to give up all our rights because of Al-Qaeda from Chechnya and Dagestan and these two brothers who it turns out, oh, that's right, you didn't see the foreign press confirmed on CIA payroll sponsored by the big new Brzezinski groups, the Jamestown group. Do you know what the, the, the Brzezinski talks about the strategy of tension? Use Al-Qaeda to overthrow other countries, then use their threat to take our rights here. It is the Brzezinski strategy developed in the late 1970s, a 2.0 of divide and conquer, a full spectrum dominance program that we're under. If you're mega banks, what do you do? You radicalize a terror group, you have them overthrow countries you want to control, but also the countries you already dominate because you want to enslave the people. You don't want them getting uppity about being taxed for $85 million a month to give money to pri private offshore interest through the bailout, through QE3. No, no, no. So you simply use Al-Qaeda to go after them. And, and, and again, this is public. They just think you're so dumb. Here are some of the headlines. Israel helps its Al-Qaeda ally with attack on Syria. Now, now again, everybody knows I'm not even anti-Israel. I get criticized by the anti-Israel crowd for not, you know, just hearing the word Israel and foaming at the mouth and flopping around on the ground. They're like, the Israel attacked the USS Liberty in 1967. Yeah, I interviewed the captain and folks before he died. It's been partially declassified that indeed the ship was attacked, along with the uh, president's authorization, LBJ, to try to sink it, to blame it on Egypt. But again, I don't just hate Israel because it's Israel. This is what, I don't hate France because it's France or England. These governments are globalist run and stage false flags. Yes, the attack on the USS Liberty was a false flag. I've interviewed the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Moore, now dead. On record, look up the interview. I've interviewed the first mate, uh, uh, Captain McGonagall, the captain. I've interviewed probably 30 people that survived the most decorated ship in U.S. history. The Israelis with the, sh with the jets and the sh ships could not sink it. The U.S. aircraft carriers launched jets to protect it, were ordered by LBJ. They ignored McNamara, the generals, the admirals did, to you turn those planes down. You turn them back. I want that ship to the GD bottom. And I've had the admirals here that quoted it, heard it in that command center. Same thing happened at Benghazi, just a tying up loose ends. Tying up loose ends. This is war, ladies and gentlemen. It's corrupt war. You ever heard of a gambit? It's an ancient Persian chess move, 3,000 plus years old, where, you, again, you've got a, a 100,000 enemy you're about to fight. You believe your force can beat them, but you need to get the enemy to show itself, its numbers, you need intelligence. You send in 100, 200, 300 horsemen to ride into the midst to be destroyed. And they follow orders. They ride in to be killed. And the military says, why should we be the ones that die in gambits? Let Americans die. And they've gotten our military to go along with it a few times, but more and more they don't. Fox Fallon in 2007. The head of CENTCOM refused to have U.S. Navy SEALs. This came out in New Yorker magazine. Cy Hirsch, two times Pulitzer Prize winner. Cheney reportedly ordered the Navy to build uh, PT boats to look like Iranian boats to attack a U.S. destroyer and blow it up and to have Navy SEALs take the mission and then dive out at the last minute. Reportedly, George Bush said no.
Bet you didn't hear about that in your local paper. It came out in New Yorker magazine. Cy Hirsch gave a speech at university about it. This is the type of stuff that adults know about. Adults don't go watch Iron Man and believe that we're really fighting terrorists. Adults know how the world really works. We are captured by foreign banking institutions. They haven't gotten our guns yet. Upwards of 150,000 just rallied in Houston for the Second Amendment. USA Today spun the number to 80,000. I've got the article right here. We are on the march. The empire's on the run politically, but they're still in control of Washington and both parties. And Obama is their champion quarterback leading them down the field against us. Yep, there it is, preparing the battlefield. The Bush administration steps up its secret moves against Iran. July 7th, 2008, a year after it happened, the plan to attack our own PT boats. I believe that's the correct article you guys pulled up. I know there's, there's video of him saying it, too. I mean, this is Pulitzer Prize winner. Two times. Now, let's be adults here. I'm going to get into what they're going to do to us in the next segment and how they're going to take our rights. Since I mentioned it, here's that USA Today. NRA rally in Houston, a big draw, 80,000. But before I get into what they're going to do to us, I want to show you some more some more history from the InfoWars May edition of InfoWars magazine. Why government should be the first suspect in any terror attack or criminal, government, criminal groups within the government by Kurt Nemo and Paul Watson. Nero and the Great Fire of Rome, firebombing his own city to blame it on the Christians. The Spanish-American War, remember the Maine, blowing up the Maine to start the Spanish-American War. 1898, William McKinley. Wilson's pretext for war, the sinking of the Lusitania. Hitler's fascist dictatorship, the Reichstag fire, firebombing his own capital. Prelude to war, how do you attack Poland? He didn't just attack Poland. He had, this is declassified, his own soldiers in Operation Himmler at Glywitz and other areas attacked their own bases. And they even dressed up concentration camp victims in Polish and German uniforms with bu bullet holes in them to show on the newsreels. Israeli false flag terror, the Levon affair, staging terror attacks to blame it on their enemies. That's declassified. This is all in the Jerusalem Post, by the way. Operation Northwoods, targeting American citizens, ABC News. The plan to shoot up movie theaters, people on the streets, and have plastic explosive bombs at public events as a pretext to take American liberty and have war with the Soviet Union. Kennedy said no, they blew his head off. Gulf of Tonkin, phantom attack on the U.S. military. That's declassified. Declassified in 2004, they staged fake attacks on the ships to launch the Vietnam War. Operation Gladio, state-sponsored terror, blamed on the left. Hundreds of bombings in Europe, blamed on the left. Every time somebody gets a little uppity, they don't control, left or right, blow something up, blame it on them. Oh, government would never do a frame up. Terror in the modern age. Back to the document cam, please. 93 World Trade Center bombing. D d on record, New York Times, CBS News, government cooked the bomb, trying the drivers, let them do it. Underwear bomber, drugged up, put on plane by U.S. government. C-SPAN reported after we broke it. Boston bombing, go through the same evidence. Authoritarian control freaks throughout history have sought to make populations dependent. The United Nations openly has talked about using food as a weapon against the third world and the industrialized first world. State Department Memorandum 200, developed by Henry Kissinger, called for destroying the food capacity, not just of the United States, but every country in the world, so they could use food scarcity as a political weapon of control. Just a decade ago, less than 10 million Americans were on food stamps. Four years ago, it was 25 million. It's now reached almost 50 million. Socialist health care is designed to destroy our health care system. The establishment wants you to be a bunch of cowardly, dumbed-down people who can't stand up for yourselves. That's why they're rushing to try to restrict citizens owning firearms. Because since the early 1990s, gun ownership has gone straight up while violent crime has gone straight down by 49%. And globalist-controlled strongholds like Chicago and New York, where they've taken the citizens' guns, have the highest crime rates in the world. What am I getting at here? The system doesn't want you to be self-sufficient. That's why I promote the fact that you should go out, buy firearms, and go take lessons and learn how to use them. I want you to stand up for your birthright of liberty and freedom. 
during a serious meltdown, they're going to tell you, hey, you want food? Turn in your guns. And that's why we need to put the globalists in check. And then finally bring them to checkmate by being self-sufficient, by being prepared, by having a garden, by learning how to can your own foods, by having friends and family and community that will stand together. But at the heart of that is having quality, storable foods. And that's why I went out more than a decade ago and found the very best food company to be my sponsor, eFoods Direct. They're the company that I personally use for my emergency food storage preparation, whether it be for natural disasters or the tyranny that is intensifying. So give them a call, 800-409-5633. That's 800-409-5633 or efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex to find the weekly and monthly specials. But uh, they're always running the specials where you can get the free six meals and the eFoods Direct audio CD put together by the experts in storable foods to answer all your questions, the eFoods planning guide, the eFoods brochure, the eFoods catalog, plus um, six free meals, creamy potato soup, tortilla soup, and cheesy chicken rice, so you can sample the high-quality storable foods from eFoods Direct. They've got a bunch of other specials. The two-week food supply provides one adult with 81 servings of healthy, delicious, storable food for 14 days. The one-month food supply provides provides 192 servings or 28 days. And then there's the one month family food pack. It will change the way you look at the food in your pantry. Every time you eat one of these meals, you are eating healthy, delicious food and saving a lot of money. The three month food supply, 576 servings of storable food for 91 days. And the one-year food supply will provide you with 2,304 servings of healthy, delicious, storable food for one full year. Your meals are as delicious and nutritious tonight as they'll be in 25 years. Bottom line, there's a bunch of specials at eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. You can also call them at the toll-free number on your screen, and they can send you a catalog with all the specials detailed and tell you about the weekly and monthly specials that they're always running eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex to find all the specials or call the toll-free number. And so in closing, when you buy from eFoodsDirect.com, you are supporting the radio broadcast, the nightly news, the magazine, the films, and everything we're doing. Because we're not like MSNBC or Media Matters that get government and corporate funding to bring down America and bring in tyranny. We are funded by our sponsors and you, the viewers and listeners, that support them. Again, that's eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex or 800-409-5633 and when you're also visiting InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com you can click on the banners to take you to the weekly and monthly specials. It's like the Hank Williams Jr. song A Country Boy Can Survive because you can't starve us out and you can't make us run because these boys were raised on shotguns. Well, there aren't really a lot of good old boys left anymore, are there? And those that are out there are demonized and are enemy number one by Homeland Security. And good old boys come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. They're people that aren't chumps who understand that they're going to take care of their family and that nobody else is. They're people that understand that if somebody else is taking care of them, that makes them a slave. And that the government doesn't want you dependent because they want to build a great future for you. They want to get you dependent so they can social engineer us. So the answer is get self-sufficient, become men again, and tell the New World Order to go straight to hell. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and eFoods Direct, our great sponsor. Crashing through the lies and disinformation. Defending the Republic from enemies foreign and domestic. Open phones in the second hour. Toll-free number to join us on this live Sunday edition, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. Second hour coming up in T-minus 13 minutes. Speaking of the electric spy in the sky watching us, all telephone calls are recorded and accessible to the government, according to FBI whistleblower. Uh, and other guests on CNN. Yes, I've been telling you that for 18 years. It's a fact. It was declassified a long time ago, but you don't want to tell the, tell the sheep all that. I've interviewed the former FBI 
whistleblowers like Shebel Edmonds, who heard them commanding Al Qaeda and bin Laden before, on, and after 9 11. And they put a national security gag order on that lady, which she just broke. Which, good thing she broke it before Obama got in, because she's arresting everybody that breaks it. Now, this is not a plug. Not that it's bad to make money. That's how I built this media operation, hiring more reporters, doing a great job. If you want to support us, get Pro Pure Water Filters discounted 10% off the promo code WATER at InfoWarsStore.com. Buy the books, the films, the pro-gun. T-shirts, every bit of support we get, we just expand fearlessly in the face of the globalist. I say, you know, it's not bad to make money because they had a bunch of news articles going, how dare Alex Jones, you know, have this media operation. Well, at least I'm not like Berkshire Hathaway getting its you know, money off government uh, bailouts. I'm going to cover that in the next hour. Uh, that's out of Reuters. Uh, no, no, we're funded by people like you, whether it's Infowars.com coffee mugs or the Seed Center, the best non-GMO, open-pollinated, you know, the very best non-GMO, non-hybrid, open-pollinated uh, seeds that produce seeds again. Wow, what a novel thought. It's all at InfoWarsStore.com. That is how you support us, and we have the lowest prices. Check it. I'm also a very competitive capitalist. So InfoWarsStore.com, fund liberty, fund this operation, and watch us grow. I want to thank everyone that has helped us out there in the media, citizens. We're all in this together. 888-253-3139, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can call and ask questions or order your ProPure, your seed, uh, your seeds to plant, uh, the bumper stickers, you name it. Speaking of bumper stickers, uh, what is in the new InfoWars May issue? This is a very special issue. Number one, it's a double cover. It says a history of false flags on the front and has the FBI and CIA as a skeleton running across the finish line of the Boston bombing on the back, detailing a history of staged terror and the evidence that points towards them bare minimum protecting terrorists on CIA payroll. Bare minimum, they're double agents. And by the way, that's Israeli news saying that. Look it up. Uh, so there you have it. Now, on the inside, it's 60 color glossy pages that covers the entire the entire field, letters to the editor, incredible art, dealing with the police state, a mother sues NYPD for pepper spraying babies, U.S. households on food stamps reaches record highs with all the graphs. Is the Boston bombing the moral equivalent of drone strikes? I love this, th these photos. Not, I actually hate it, but I love to expose it. Nazi Germany checkpoints with the police. With the military checking IDs, Boston, the police and military checking IDs. Don't you believe the Nazis said they had a good reason? If history repeated itself, would anyone notice? We've got retired Army colonel warns DHS acquisitions are bold threat of war against the American people. Uh, why government should be the first suspect in any terror attack. Already covered that. What's a false flag? One of the top search terms on the web. We break down what a false flag is. Senate passes Monsanto Protection Act. Granting Monsanto power over U.S. government. Uh, I show the art of David Horsey in the L.A. Times demonizing me. And then I show what a sheeple he is. Uh, we need to put that on Infowars.com. That hadn't been on the web yet. By the way, sign up at Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Tomorrow we'll send this out, the, the digital copy of the uh, magazine, to you free. A big keep and bear arms, come and take it poster in the middle, two pages. Growing against the flow, uh, different uh, systems uh, to get off the grid, people creating their own ammo factories to get around the shortage. I'm going to cover that next hour. It's actually linked on DrudgeReport.com, how the government's asking all the big ammo manufacturers to just supply everything they can manufacture to them. What's causing the panic, Obama? We get into Obama and all of his secret police activities. We get into 85% of cops say gun control is useless, detrimental, and a new major study that's out with all the graphs. We get into the uh, drill they were running on the day of the bombing, which they don't want anybody to look at. It was one of the top stories on the web for a whole week. Contractors at Boston Bombing stood near bomb, let before detonation, photos of them. And here's the big one, and I'm going to stop talking about the magazine. There's a whole other half of it to get to. Three free, full-size Petroleum based, not the little paper ones. This cost me 40 grand to do this, to put this in 120,000 magazines. So that's like four, I don't know, it comes out to like 100, 300, 400, uh, I mean, 110,000, or maybe more magazines we printed. I forget the exact number. It's over 110,000 times three. 
that's 330, 340,000 bumper stickers. Infowars.com, save the Constitution, prisonplanet.com, and infowars.com. Big stickers. Post them on your car, your house, your property, your book bag. Give them to friends and family, but put them on your property, not other people's property. And this will be explosive. The average bumper sticker in a major city, the estimate, is seen like 20,000 times. Uh, so, again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the key here is to get active. Will we save the world by putting these 300-something thousand bumper stickers out? No. But laying down, we, we won't save the world. That's my point here, is that acting like jellyfish is going to fully and totally enslave this population to the highest level that this society has ever seen. And if we have a government that is funding Al-Qaeda and using it to engage in open war crimes, attacking countries that haven't done anything to anybody, do any of you think you're safe? They are already moving in Europe to take people's pension funds. They already are, actually, and to take their bank accounts. It's now starting here. Congressional hearings about doing it. This is the type of, 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 of over-the-top tyranny that we're talking about. Now, talking about where all this is going in America, I just showed you the article where on CNN, FBI agents admit everything you do is listened to in live time without warrants. Totally illegal, but now they think you're so conditioned they just admit it. And notice it didn't protect you. Four, uh, 2,000 police, 400 National Guard, contractors with black backpacks right where the bombing goes off didn't protect you. But meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, we have... We have tens of thousands that drown a year. We have hundreds of thousands that die in car wrecks, hundreds of thousands that die from flesh-eating bacteria. But the media doesn't hype it up and go ooga booga. Look at these articles. Shiny dog bowl blamed in Santa Rosa fire. It, it was like a lens and supposedly caught a fire. The answer is ban the dog bowl. Because you've got to have a world free of risk. And only a total government with total surveillance can do that. Of course, history shows it'll be the total threat. Five women in their 30s killed on a night out after they became trapped inside their burning limo from an electrical fire on San Francisco Highway. The answer, ban limos, ban fires, ban gasoline. Shouldn't be able to be trusted with gasoline. Somebody might get gasoline and go out and burn somebody's house down. That's the uh, nanny state idea. Soccer referee punched by player in Utah dies. The answer is amputee, amputate all arms. The answer is cut everyone's arms off now. That is the answer. And then Kurt Nemo, getting serious, as another article up on Infowars.com. Uh, we got some breaking news. Israel strikes Syria, says tar targeting uh, Hezbollah arms. Is, is that new? Because they've, they've been striking them all day. Oh, they're striking them again. Yeah, Syria can't have its own arms in its own country while the West invades out of three different nations, out of Turkey, and of course, out of Jordan. Incredible. So more airstrikes. All right, I'm going to take calls in this segment, then I'm going to get into more news in the next, and then more calls for the balance of the broadcast. But I want to get into what they're going to do under this. Oh, don't worry, the NDAA is not for citizens, even though it is, and... We'll never not let you have a trial. And now they're like, we'll give him a trial, just just no counsel. And he confessed while his throat was cut out while sedated. We have no proof of that, just the Boston Globe says so. In fact, I know you gave that to me, CJ, but I can't find it. Will you reprint me? Uh, it was uh, Boston Bomber confesses uh, to bombing. And, and, then, and, and I've got USA Today, it says the Boston Bomber. Not the suspect, not the man on trial. I mean, they told us he did it. And they never lied to us. I mean, they t we're going to burn down Dorner's, uh, you know, the building he was in, and then they burned it down and said, we did never said that. And we're like, but you have the tape. Well, we don't mean burn it down. <laughs> now go back to sleep. <laughs> Pay me some tax money, scum. Take some vaccines. How sick's your family right now?
Let's go to Andrew in Pennsylvania, then Terry, Mark, Truthinator, Annette, Creed, Ben, Jason, Peter, Ramon, Aaron, Sam. We'll get to all of you, probably. Andrew, PA, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Alex. I'm currently in the process of trying to uh, solve world peace problems, and um, you may have heard consciousness experts like Dave Wilcock, Greg Braden, and even David Icke have talked about how if you can get a lot of people meditating together, it will suppress global evil. So if we can get the square root of 1% of the global population, that's about um, 8,485 people meditating together, we can um, suppress global evil. And I've actually sent out a lot of uh, messages on Planet InfoWars, on the missions, to about a dozen or so groups to uh, see this. And is there any way maybe you might be able to help me out here, like for a 10-minute meditation on July 4th from like 5 to 5, 10 p.m. to try to... Hey, hey, even if, even if you call it prayer or whatever, the, the, all the major studies have been pulled up, anybody can pull them up, that praying has helped with cancer, uh, people praying, well, because what you focus on, you then tend to manifest. You can call it magic, whatever you want. It's real. You know, they've, they've all these university studies about you know, people do have that sixth sense. Now, I, I think there's a lot of quacks out there. I don't think it's very controllable. I've had a lot of dreams that come true. I don't really get off into all that stuff. But I think focusing and meditating on solutions and then taking action in the third dimension, in the real world, as we call it, I think that's where the real power is, taking that first step, you know, getting this magazine. Say Austin has 60,000 copies on the street for free right now. Put those stickers up all over the place. Wow, that's that'll get some prayer going. The New World Order will be praying. <laughs> but uh, look, they are scared of you praying or meditating, whatever you want to call it. That's why they say there is no God, there is no God. And then all they do is meditate or pray, if you want to call it that. And then t and try to have big events to tell you a lie to scare you. See, people think I'm trying to scare them. No, I'm trying to show you the evil to know that we can be empowered and beat them. But I have learned believing you can win, just believing is half the battle. Now, trust in God, but roll away from the rocks. Trust in God, but tie up your camel, as the Bedouin said. We need to pray, or even if you don't believe in God, sit in a room, get quiet, turn off everything else, think about the world. Because they want to get us so sped up, moving so fast, we never pull back. And, 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 and I think pulling back, yes, I will support you that on July 4th, we should put an article out about this. July 4th should be a day of reflection, a day of prayer, a day of meditation, whatever you call it, uh, a day of repenting for not doing enough to fight evil and not being active in the real world and letting evil be active. Evil has been active. Good has been inactive. There are multiple forces in the universe we need to be, there's evil, there's good. The lukewarm don't exist. God spits it out. So I say to you, yes, brother, July 4th, a day of reflection. How's that sound? Yeah, but the key is if you have all the people doing it at the same time, because energy flows where attention goes, as David Icke always says, it does amplify the ability. And that's why I was telling you a specific time, like 5, 5 10 p.m. Eastern time would be, a, I thought, a convenient time. Hey, the time Bible says the, the people will pray and seek my face and repent. I will heal their land. And I think July 4th should be a day of prayer, a day of reflection, a day of meditation. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You know, I desperately want to believe that America hasn't been taken over to a great extent by foreign mega banks hell bent on bankrupting our free market system and creating a monopoly control grid. But unfortunately, um, the facts show that is what is happening. I want to cover news. In this segment, and then when we start the next segment, I'll go to Andrew and uh, Sam and, I don't know, 12 other people that are patiently holding on the phone system right now. The toll-free number when you hear somebody hang up to call in is 877-789-ALEX. Again, that's 877-789-2539. We'll get you up and on the air. The news websites are prisonplanet.com. That's the auxiliary backup clone, but it has some original news of infowars.com, and we stream video and have the subscription service uh, at prisonplanet.tv and infowarsnews.com. Okay, so our government is violating the entire Bill of Rights Constitution. And if they can do that, why shouldn't they take our bank accounts? Why shouldn't they take our guns? Why shouldn't they put the military on the streets? Why shouldn't they uh, spy on us without warrants? And the answer is that is what they're doing. And I've got a report coming up at the end of the show 
uh, with Boston residents interviewed, we went out and talked to people in Boston. Almost no one liked police coming to their house, pointing guns at them, shoving them downstairs. Uh, and then they didn't even catch the guy. It was a citizen that did, the patsy. This has never been done before. You can say, well, everyone's a terror suspect. Isn't that perfect to take power? How about there's one terrorist in America? So everybody come outside with your hands up. This is about the bureaucrats being rock stars that run our lives. And for narcissist nobodies, they think making you submit to them is the act of power. A highly developed person, it's the opposite. A highly developed person wants to go off and be by themselves generally. And that is the problem, isn't it? Winners want to be left alone and be by themselves and are confident. Losers want to run everything. And am I saying that all cops are losers? No. A lot of cops got in it because their families have been warriors. It's a historical thing, and they don't like bad guys. When I was young and naive, 18, I thought about being a cop because I wanted to get bad guys. My dad had the friend who was the head of the federal marshals for the region over Texas, and he met with me, and he said, you're not a criminal, are you? And I said, no. And he goes, then don't join. Don't become a cop. He goes, when I first joined, it wasn't totally criminal. Now it is. I was at my dad's office, in his office, head of the federal marshals at that time, about 1993. You look up whatever region Texas and others are, and that was the guy. I mean, you know, that's, that's part of my awakening right there. So, so, so I get people out there that want to be like, we'll watch Iron Man and believe you're really fighting Al-Qaeda when you join the police force. But listen, the government's been captured at the top, okay? Now, now we can change things if you wake up to that. But if you don't, just when all the rest of the stuff comes true I've told you about, then stand up. Of course, it'll be a lot worse and a lot harder then. But, I mean, look how much has already come true. When are you going to wake up? I mean, look, they bought 2.2 billion bullets. In the last 19 months. And for the first year we reported on it, it was just 500 million, a billion bullets, a billion six. They would go, Alex, you said 500 million, a billion, a billion six. Which is it? Knowing I can't respond that, well, you go to the first report I did and then a year later, it's 1.6. You act like I'm giving different numbers. Boy, you think your audience are idiots. Now it's 2.2 billion last time a few months ago. I haven't added it up yet. Now DHS, this is linked on DrudgeReport.com, the left-hand side, at least it was when I started the show. Can we check that and click it? I say that because it's already rolled out the front page of InfoWars.com. I'm told it's been up since Friday. Hat tip to DrudgeReport.com. DHS seeks millions more rounds of ammunition. Market survey asked companies if they can provide 2 million bullets within 30 to 60 days. And I looked this up and I called... When I saw this Friday, a big ammo manufacturer I know in, I'm not going to even say where. The point is, I called them, and they said, well, don't say from me, but yeah, we got the call. And we got the prospectus emailed to us. They, they, they're, so they're wanting to know if they can buy up no matter what gets made, they're going to put orders in for it. Okay, it's called cornering the market while getting a, enough ammo. It's like to fight a 35-year-plus war in Iraq. It was 27. So, yeah, it's still linked on Drudge. Uh, big says six millions more rounds. Now, let's go to the top of DrudgeReport.com and show the breaking news. We posted this this morning when it was speculation. Drudge now posted it when it's confirmed. Can we go to the top of DrudgeReport.com, please? There it is. Syria, Israeli strike declaration of war. Let's click on it. Reuters. Israeli strike. Syria says targeting Hezbollah arms. And then Syria says it is an act of war. It is an act of war. And again, I don't support Assad, another corrupt politician. But compared to other, Al-Qaeda, he's a good guy. I'm not against Israel. Most, a lot of Israelis are against this. But this is evil to take out Syria to put Al-Qaeda in. That's, let's not exaggerate. Al-Qaeda is probably about 500 times worse than Assad. I mean, Al-Qaeda, folks, we've posted these articles, we've posted these videos, had them censored on our YouTube channels. We even posted it on our backup channels. We got like 10 of them, and they, and they, and they gave us a strike. Next, they're going to shut the channel down. I mean, they're cutting Christians' heads off. They're lining families up and shooting them. They are ethnically, they're in control of one-third of the country. NATO, Obama announced Friday, they're giving them heavy arms because in two years, they haven't been able to beat them. I mean, this is hardcore crime. 
And now Israel attacks, and I have to have the headline, Israel backs Al-Qaeda in Syria. It's true. I would lie to you if I didn't tell you that. And it makes me wonder, what will they do next? I mean, this is getting so crazy. Well, I'll tell you what they'll do next. They're going to use this new war coming up as a political distraction. There's Business Insider. The U.S. is openly sending heavy weapons to the Syrian rebels. Bazookas, heat-seeking missiles. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And when I want to fly somewhere, they'll try to grab my daughters and my son and drag them off to a private area and have some weird pot belly guy with a mustache grab their genitals. Looking for bin Laden in their pants. When bin Laden is in the Pentagon's rear end. I mean, I'm sorry, that's, that's where he is. You want to find him, TSA, do a proctology exam on Senator Hagel, the sec def, and you will find, there it is. U.S. rethinks arming Syrian rebels, says Chuck Hagel. That was a month ago. And they're always playing these mind games, man. Like Obama said two weeks ago, we're not going to arm the rebels. And I said, they're arming them already, and get ready for the war. When Obama says, I won't sign the NDAA to secretly disappear American citizens, I said he will sign it. Turned out he wrote it, and he did sign it. They do that to make you go to sleep. I won't spy on you. I don't want to take your guns. Bloomberg says he supports the Second Amendment when he's for an open, total ban. I've learned their tricks, man. When they say they're zigging, they're zagging. Nine times out of ten. I mean, they lie when the truth would serve them better because they don't want to tell the truth because they're of their father. You know who he is. He wears a red jumpsuit with little horns and a pitchfork. I wish he did. He'd be more easy to see. Now, you want to know what's coming to America? Here it is. The new normal Boston bombing suspect interrogated without counsel, and they reported the Boston Globe. He confessed while sedated, and we're just supposed to trust a government. And, and the new precedent set. Well, he's a terrorist. He doesn't deserve it. Folks, they could say anybody's a terrorist. The government has got car bombings going off and using al-Qaeda all over Syria. If they'll kill a bunch of innocent Syrians, who I'll assure you they respect a lot more than you, the globalists hate Americans more than anybody in the world. Once they get rid of the Bill of Rights Constitution, it's all for you. Of course, I told you that 11 years ago. Now they say, number one terror threat, gun owners, returning veterans, Christians, conservatives, libertarians. And here it is. People wonder why we're upset about the track team in Texas winning the championship regionals, pointing up to God's, you know, like number one. You can pump your fist. That's okay. U.S. Army labeled evangelical and Catholics examples of religious extremism. Fox News. Pentagon religious proselytizing is not permitted. Even saying the name Jesus, you will now be court-martialed. Uh, high school track team disqualified when runners gestures thanks God. It's all part of selective enforcement. Homeland Security is run by foreign banks in their own words. It's a takeover, a foreign corporate takeover. We've got the West mesmerized watching TV and playing video games all day. And while that's happening, a bunch of cold-blooded corporate interests are just slicing and dicing free societies, staging terror attacks, paying criminals to do it, to then get the giant bonanzas of the police state takeover, billions in cameras per state, billions in robots per state to fight a threat they manufactured. Now, again, they're now saying, hey, you don't get lawyers. We'll just say you're guilty and tell the media you confessed. And in the past, you wouldn't get a conviction with that, but they don't care because now it's national security. And here is USA Today Weekend Edition. Are our stadiums safe? And it goes on in there to say, oh, the Israelis are advising us. We'll turn America into like the West Bank. And the government people will be like the Israelis. And all the rest of us will be like the Palestinians with no rights. That's actually what it says. But doesn't that sound good, America? 
the, the, the globalists with their little special IDs, they are going to be God. And all the rest of us, we are insurgents. Will you guys show the CBS News article from Friday? Uh, police train that are trained that citizens are insurgents. Oh, yes. This is what it's like to live in an occupied country where they just phase in the martial law slowly. But pretty soon you start to flame at one. Pretty soon it's at 10. Or to quote Spinal Tap 11. We're about an eight now. And it'll go on up. And don't worry. All your prosperity will be taken. You'll be a good slave. But you'll learn to cheer it, though. You'll learn to cheer it. Uh, so I, I was watching the Kentucky Derby at my parents and saw the TSA with the Army, Army, the regular Army, searching everyone and standing around with machine guns as if they would stop a real terrorist with a bag. You'd walk up to the Army and blow them up. It's just letting you get used to it because it's for you because they're going to take your pension and bank account and they're going to give it to Warren Buffett. I got an article about that I'm going to get to, but first, let's go to your calls quickly. Terry in Washington, you're on the air. Welcome, sir. Alex, you're a rock star, buddy. I mean, you, you, everything, you, everything you say, I definitely, you're, you're, it's right, you're just right on. I mean, No, brother. No, belong, no, no. History's right on. I'm just doing my job, but go ahead. Hey, anybody that doesn't belong to prison playing the TV sucks. It's 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 awesome, but here's my question: During the Boston Marathon, the whole world, including me, because I was watching you today, Mister Mister Pelser was on the show when when this took place, and uh, not too long after that, the uh, fertilizer plant in West Texas blew up. And we all know they had way too much, way too much uh, fertilizer there to begin with. My my question to you: How much do you think was shipped out of there before that plant blew up? You know, I don't know, and I appreciate your call. Pe you know, people have said it looks like a bolt of lightning. Does it? Well, yeah. I mean, you get a big fire going, lightning gets attracted to that because of the static electricity. You get the gas of that fuel burning, uh, of that fertilizer burning, it, it can hit a spark and explode. Let me, let me tell you, I've gone out when it's raining. We have footage of this, by the way. It's in a new shooting show coming out. It's raining, and the tracers caught fires. So we stopped using them while it was raining. So, you know, that's what goes on when stuff's been dry. Um, look, we could shut down all our industry. Stuff's still going to blow up. It's part of an industrialized world. There should be safety, but nothing's perfectly safe. Uh, I mean, that's all I can really say about that situation. A lot of political grandstanding going on because of it. Uh, but uh, look at how a bunch of more people, what, 15 people died at that. You're not hearing a call to burn fertilizer or, or, or to ban fertilizer. That would kill billions of people if they banned fertilizer. Uh, I mean, people die. That's just part of the world. Why do they only hype it up when it's to get our guns or it's a bombing to take our liberties? Because they're behind it, folks. I'm sorry. I've looked at it too long. Most of the time, special interests stage this stuff. It's like 90% of the time or more. I, I say that to be conservative. I've never found a case where somebody gets a swastika carved on their back or somebody uh, gets you know anti-gay stuff put on their apartment dorm that it wasn't the person staging it to get attention. Well, you don't think government does that? I mean, there aren't. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, I've seen like 10 cases the last decade or more of people burning crosses in their own yards to get on the news. And anybody that says you shouldn't look at elements in the government, and the government's, Tens of millions of people. It's a bunch of foreign interest. Of course they're staging stuff. If they'll turn Syria and Libya and, and, and Egypt to a great extent over to Al-Qaeda. I mean, I read every two days where they burned up a church and killed 20 Christians. And it's like, oh, big deal in, in, in Egypt where our government put them in charge. They're killing Christians. We ought to be hearing every Christian's name. What happened to them? But our government's doing that. Our government in Rwanda killed 900,000 Christians, our government with NATO and UN and all the rest of it, they hate us. Why do they hate real Christians? <laughs> I think you know the answer to that.
They're playing for the other team. Mark in Ohio, you're on the air. Welcome. Ah, uh, thank you, Alex. Hope you had a good little mini vacation with your family. That was a mini vacation. I was working during it. Quite frankly, I took those hot baths in the hot springs that, like, turned me into a vegetable. But, yeah, you know, go ahead. There you go. I just wonder if you had any uh, validity to uh, this uh, nuclear incident drill starting Monday in Montana. I did see that. They, 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 look, they have hundreds of drills going constantly. They have black helicopter drills. It's all part of desensitization. And to be in the local news to create the perception, like duck and cover in the 50s and 60s, that an attack is imminent and only the government will keep you safe. Right, right, right. Well, like like I said, I, I saw that, and then earlier that week there was stuff circulating about some some Navy SEALs, and they 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 were they were trying to disarm bombs and this and that. And I didn't. I thought it was kind of humorous, and then this comes out. I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. And well, look, what I need you to do is I need all our listeners to go with a video camera, videotape it. Put it on YouTube. I'm not a tech guy, and I can put stuff on YouTube myself, so it's easy to do. God bless you. I appreciate your call, Mark. Everybody needs to go out and needs to videotape everything, and that will bring down the New World Order. Truth Raider in Oregon, you're on the air. Hello, sir. Hey, buddy. I got a simple question for you. In the next year or two, would you consider doing another reporter contest? If I get enough capital in to hire more reporters, that is my plan. Uh, I'm right now. I'm hiring video people and and uh, graphics folks and TV switcher folks. But uh, I am I am. We got a hundred thousand dollar contest for filmmaking uh, that uh, is now being judged in the next two months. But yes, sir, we're trying to grow the Infowars operation. Great. I did a couple of comprehensive interviews. I thought were pretty good, and I was told that hey, you could be the next Alex Jones. So uh, that, that's great. I, uh, I'd like to believe me. I wish there were five Alex Joneses bigger than me. I would. I swear, if some guy came along better than me, doing a better job, I would literally say, "Here's my infrastructure. I'll I'll go do a report once a week. You're in command now, Admiral." <laughs> But unfortunately, there's nobody ready to land their troops beyond the energy field. All right, I'm going back to your calls in a moment. Hit a few more news stories here. Uh, but don't forget, if you're a radio listener or TV viewer, you need to get the May issue of InfoWars Magazine. You can subscribe, get the next, uh, next 12 issues, or you can simply buy them in bulk of groups of 10 up to 100 at cost to give out to friends and family. It exposes... The history of government-sponsored terrorism and corporate-sponsored terrorism as a pretext to control the people. And it comes with three free big, high-quality, I mean, the big petroleum bumper stickers, the plastic bumper stickers that last for years. Infowars.com, Save the Constitution, PrisonPlanet.com, and an Infowars.com sticker. Three big stickers, free to put on your car, give to friends, and put in legal and lawful areas, i.e., your own property. That's available at InfoWarsStore.com. So get a year subscription today or buy them in bulk at cost. Now, now I, I, I mentioned this, so I'm going to get to this right now. All I've got to do with this article is read the first paragraph. If you want to know why big mega rich are always calling to raise middle class taxes and calling for you to give your guns up, because they've learned people tend to take over governments and arrest them. You don't want to go to jail like Bernie Madoff or Ken Lay. But old Berkshire Hathaway had Warren Buffett shut down the Keystone Pipeline so that he'd have to train the fuel instead of it being in a pipeline on his own trains and sell it to China on the west coast of Canada. Berkshire profit rises 51% shares at record high. But your profit making 125000 a year, you're keeping too much. You need to raise taxes so he gets bailout money. Now listen to this quote. Berkshire cash hits record $49.1 billion. That's just his cash as profit climbs, and it turns out he takes his money offshore and pays zero tax. He tells you about one of his personal taxes and says it's too low. And Obama pays 18% and Romney like 12% because the rich guys are exempt. That's the way the regulations are written. Now, now let's get to this. Berkshire, they didn't take over schmucks, so they'd pay taxes. That's for you. Berkshire profit rises 51% shares at record high. Reuters, now listen to the first paragraph. Warren Buffett, the eugenicist, I should add. Berkshire Hathaway, Inc. on Friday said quarterly profit rose 
51% on solid performance in insurance. Yeah, they make you buy Obamacare. So it doubled the premiums in the first year. Mm -hmm. It's good to have a business where you're made to buy it. No wonder you spent $100 million plus on lobbying for that. And because you made billions. And by many of its other businesses, as well as gains from investments and derivatives. Derivatives. Oh. $85 billion a month is paid to foreign derivatives and to Berkshire Hathaway. Of course, that's classified. They won't tell Congress where it goes exactly, just that it goes to Berkshire Hathaway, i.e. Wells Fargo, and five other big banks that are foreign. Your tax money, you're going to pay interest on it, too. You pay interest to give him money. Look at him. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. He, by the way, he wants your guns too. That'll teach you. Look at him smiling. <laughs> oh, isn't that just precious? Oh, but he wants your guns in higher taxes for the poor people because he loves you. <laughs> Uh, I'll be watching ABC News, and they'll say at the end, sponsored by Berkshire Hathaway. And the whole show is Warren Buffett going, rich people don't pay enough taxes. Raise their taxes. Because it goes to him. But he can make all the money he wants out of fiat garbage. He wants to wreck you. He's a eugenicist, and he supports Agenda 21 to shut down American energy. And don't worry, he will. He will just feel trendy and support it because it makes you feel good inside and you will have your future destroyed. Don't worry and take all the vaccines and drink all the fluoride. Don't read the Harvard study on the brain damage and the cancer. Just, you know, wonder why your whole family's sick and why you got cancer. Hey, it's all right. The government loves you. I know this is too scary to face. I, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, here, here's the good news, though. Nigel Farage, routine guest on our show. Uh, they've now won the major uh, midterm elections in England, and they're set to overtake the conservative Labor Party, I mean the conservative Tory party, and defeat Labor. And the government, he survived a plane crash, by the way, that was very suspicious, but ideas are bulletproof. <laughs> and Nigel Farage survived, and look at him smiling, celebrating with a pint. He's an anti-Bilderberg, anti-New World Order, anti-banker bailout candidate. He's basically Alex Jones, Ron Paul 2.0. And he's winning, 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 winning. Who started the party with him? Lord Moncton, who we need to get back on the show. I need to go over there and have a cup of tea with him. Am I going to Bilderberg 2013 next month? I'll tell you tomorrow on the show. <laughs> Anyways, and if they block me from entering the country, I still win. Win, 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 win. Okay, uh, let's, because you're not going to stop the signal. Let's go to your phone calls. Let us talk to Annette in California. Annette, you're on the front lines of the info war. Welcome. Thank you, Alex. Um, you know, looking at old pizza pie here with the globalists and the New World Order agenda and the different components that they have that they're instituting to bring America down to its knees. It's not just the GMO and the vaccination and the abortion clinics. Um, the, um, there's also torture programs going on in this land. Well, no, that's and, true. They train police and you can pull up police taser people to answer questions now. I mean, North Korea does that. I mean, North Korea is free. Are you a conspiracy theorist? It's good to taser people to make them give a urine sample or taser people to answer questions. I mean, there's no Fifth Amendment. That, that never existed. Extremists said that existed. There's no Sixth Amendment for right to counsel. Just take the shots, lady. Drink the fluoride. Eat the GMO. Never mind the cancer and death rates exploding. They love you, honey. Well... <laughs> There's also the radio frequency technology that they're using. Oh, it's on American record public. to give mice cancer, but it's good for us. Well, they have it on, on every product, every type of item we buy. They have these embedded chips and everything. And the Pentagon said uh, 12 years ago in Chicago at the RFID conference, they would use it to control us and enslave us. But so what? Look, why fight it? Why not decide to join it and feel powerful? Why not, why not worship government? Why not worship tyranny? Why, I mean, what's wrong with you, honey? <laughs> well, actually, 
I think part of the experimentation with this new technology is concentrating on individuals. They call themselves targeted individuals. Just no, I know, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I know there's a lot of it going on, and God bless you. Listen, listen, I, I got to apologize on air. You know, I said the CCE experiment was wrong, injecting tens of thousands of people with syphilis and letting them spread it and then die over 40 years painfully. And that would be saying the government was bad. I think it was good. I love the government. <laughs> and when the Bill and, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation last year injected hundreds of thousands of kids with polio and 60-something thousand got paralyzed, I mean, I think that was a gift. There's nothing like being paralyzed for your whole life. <laughs> I was wrong. Oh, Bill Gates, you're such a good man. Oh, Creed in Oklahoma, you're on the air. Would you like to be paralyzed, Creed? Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, just another crazy person out here from Oklahoma. I just want to get your thoughts on something here. Uh, plans scheduled and a re resolution next week uh, on May 8th, Wednesday, for Texas Israel Day. Two Republican state senators, John Corona and uh, Senator or Representative Stephanie Carter, have taken up the cause to pronounce Texas Israel Day. I think it's, that's uh, good. And now that Israel's openly backing Al Qaeda against Assad, what if you showed up and said, I support Israeli? Uh, groups supporting Al Qaeda. I mean, look, what are you, you going to tell me? Al Qaeda's bad next, and that they supposedly attacked the World Trade Center? Everybody knows we were never at war with East Asia. Everybody knows Al Qaeda is an ally of America. Fair enough, but I mean, what do you? I mean, you have problems with Spain coming up in here, buying up the highways, or getting access to the toll roads. But I mean, I just want your thoughts on these. I don't have, I, listen. You know, I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a problem with Spain taking over existing highways and putting giant toll roads on them and doubling and triple prices and raping us. Hi, Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources. With over 30 years of experience in the precious metals business, I can tell you without a doubt, we are facing the most dangerous and volatile times, not just in the United States, but worldwide. Peace of mind is gold and silver. Now is the time to invest in gold. When it comes to bullion coins, our prices are competitive and the closest to melt. If it's numismatics you're looking for, we have some of the best deals out there. Visit MidasResources.com today or go to Infowars.com and click on the link to see our daily specials. Here's an example of one of our long-term specials we've been offering for more than a year. Two silver dollars from the turn of the last century, plus two powerful films, The Obama Deception and The American Dream. We also add in the book Dishonest Money, all for $72 and free shipping. The most trusted name in precious metals is Midas Resources. Call 1-800-686-2237 or go to Infowars.com. I'm Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Sources. We are now only entering the edge of a global financial superstorm, the likes of which the planet has never seen. Here in the United States, the private Federal Reserve is giving more than $85 billion of taxpayer money a month to themselves and other offshore foreign banks. And the worst part is, we have to pay the bank's interest on the money we give them. There is now a race between the global central bank mafia cartels to see who can devalue their country's currencies the fastest. We are already seeing big increases in inflation at the grocery store and the gas line. This will eventually lead to hyperinflation. More than a dozen top globalists like George Soros have been buying record amounts of gold while at the same time bad-mouthing it to the public. Don't just listen to what they say. Watch what they do. For more than 6,000 years of recorded human history, gold has been the ultimate hedge against uncertain times and inflation. Before investing in metals, it is important to do your own research and find a reputable company. Midas Resources has the highest Better Business Bureau rating of an A+. Unfortunately, very few precious metal companies can boast that. Midas Resources has assembled one of the most educated, researched, and professional teams of brokers in the industry. The evidence is overwhelming. In uncertain times, gold and silver is safe harbor. Now is the time to invest in gold. Call 800-686-2237 and Midas Resources will make 
email you 10 reasons to own gold absolutely free. No shipping. It's absolutely free. And finally, Ted Anderson wants to challenge you to find any deal that comes close to his two silver dollars at cost with free shipping, with two free films and a book for $72. That's more than $160 value for $72 shipping included. Click the link at InfoWars.com to go to the MidasResources.com specials page. Brought to you by MidasResources.com and Ted Anderson, the trusted name in precious metals. All right, we're going back to your calls. I told the other caller to hold, but he hung up. Look. Everybody has these support Israeli, uh, you know, support Israel signs up everywhere. And I'm not anti-Israel. But then when Israel is bombing Syria because the Western-backed Al-Qaeda rebels are there and they're supporting them, I call baloney. I call something else. But I think good old boys out there are such big supporters of Israel. They may actually hoist Al-Qaeda flags over the VFW and... I'll be anti-American because I don't support Al-Qaeda. Here's the article on Infowars.com. Israel helps its Al-Qaeda ally with attack on Syria. Right after Hegel, you know, comes out and says, we think there's evidence they use chemical weapons. Oh, do they have WMDs like Iraq too? I mean, it's just too amazing. By the way, they dug this up. Now, this is her on 60 Minutes. I've seen the clip after this when it became a big story. Uh, back, I think, like in 19, uh, was it 90? No, no, yeah, it was like, it was when she was uh, Clinton's, uh, Clinton's guy. So I guess it was right before Bush got in, in 2000. And it was over a million Iraqis once the war started that died of the sanctions. It was an industrialized country shut down. And she's asked, is a half a million dead a good price to pay for security in the Gulf? And her answer is yes. And then she got asked about it on other shows and doubled down. But here's the original with Leslie Stahl on 60 Minutes. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice. But the price, we think the price is worth it. We think the price is worth it. Oh, no, that was what she said it later in 1996. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a bunch of these clips. She said it over and over again. So, so there you go. And do you think they care about you? The price is worth it for interest? They mean globalist interest. Well, what are the globalist interests? You better find out what those are because they're not your interest. They're not your interest. Ben in Georgia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex, appreciate the opportunity to be on your show this afternoon. I wanted just to ask you, I've never heard much about a particular individual on your show, but as someone that's always been a patriot and a hero in my mind living here in the Atlanta area, and that was the late uh, Larry McDonald. He was the U.S. congressman that represented... Yeah, no, they landed his aircraft and killed him in North Korea, really Russia. No, he was, he was the head of the John Birch Society, a Democrat, a really smart, good-looking guy who was presidential material and who was anti-New World Order, and they and they kidnapped him and killed him better than a hammer. I, I've covered Larry McDonald. Yeah, just you know, the thing that Larry did was that he really used his congressional record and even introduced a House bill, 773, to have a complete and comprehensive investigation into Council Foreign Relations and Trilateral Commission. And a lot of people say, oh, is this the coincidence that his plane went down over Russia? But we know the folks who live here that were very close to him know that there was no conspiracy on that, that it was an act that was carried out by the, the Rockefellers, by David Rockefeller and his cronies. Now they never hurt anybody. They're good people. Have you had your fluoride water today? I appreciate your call, Ben. Let's talk to Jason in Ohio. Jason, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, what's going on? I'm from the great state of Ohio, the great police state, brother. Speaking of police states, we're going to air it tomorrow. I ran out of time today. The, 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 the residents of Boston uh, and, and Watertown, they did not like having guns pointed at them and made to march down the street with their hands up. But I say to prove they're not dangerous, the police should have executed all of them. They already are with the fluoride water. Why not? The police just shot 137 rounds at one car out here, and all they found was a police can. I think they should execute the whole city to prove they're safe. I think only police should be allowed to live. That's basically what the globalists are doing with eugenics. 
being a little sarcastic today, a little bit of dark satire, but that's what the New World Order is, Jason, is they're just getting rid of everybody, soft kill. Notice how many people are sick and dying right now? It's going to get a lot better. It's not only the Iraqis that get to die. Yeah, it's over here in Cleveland, all the mayors, all the underlings, everybody's on Agenda 21, left side, right side, Republicans and Democrats. No, they're shutting the economy down. They're going to bankrupt everything and teach you to go on food stamps. So you're under government control. And so you roll that sleeve up and take that vaccine. I say take it. I support the government. Thank you, Jason. Peter in Washington, you're on the air. Have you had your vaccines today, Peter? Yeah, uh, I'd like to um, um, read something um, on a collateral issue. It's from J. Robert Oppenheimer, the principal developer of the American atom bomb. Yes. And here's what he said. There are children playing in the streets who could solve some of my top problems in physics because they have modes of sensory perception that I lost long ago. Of course, Ray Kurzweil would uh, think that's silly since uh, he knows everything. No, no, that's true. Top scientists are obsessed with uh, adolescents and young people to pick their brains because brain cells start dying at about 25 in mass. And absolutely, the youth have it all. We need to have a computer to know the universe. We have the computer. We are the universe. We are made in the image of the big G God. Pretty heavy stuff, huh, compadre? Yes. Yeah, I've seen that quote. I actually read that in a book he wrote. I forget the name of it. But uh, what's your point on that issue? Well, my point is just that, uh, that, that um, they don't even know everything, and yet they're so narrow in these man-made computers. That's right. It's called cancer. It's called cancer. They destroy humanity. Hmm? They're enemies of humanity in the truest sense of the word. That's right. And uh, I, I, I was, wasn't sure whether you had the quote, but certainly from a man like Oppenheimer, who was a, a, not a, such a you know, moral person, although he was sorry for a lot of things by the time he was, uh, you know, by, before he died. But uh, uh, he was a man of thought and a man of action. And I think the reason why, one reason why he got that big job was because his family had a ranch, a summer home, out in New Mexico where they had to draw water themselves, and he rode the horses, and he... No, no, that's right. The globalists are the most specialized, like, cold-blooded people you've ever seen. I appreciate your great points, Peter. Yeah, uh, well, let's punch this quote back up. There are children playing in the streets who could solve some of my top problems in physics because they have models, uh, modes of sensory perception that I lost long ago. And that's Robert Oppenheimer, J. Robert Oppenheimer. You're absolutely right. Listen, here's the issue. If cancer had a consciousness, it would believe it was winning. And the globalists don't have empathy. They have a crazed lust for power, so they get power. They are the plague. They are the enemy. They are the enemy. And they have dumbed humanity down in an attempt to be able to take it over. They see humanity as a wild mold, as they call us in quotes, out of control. Instead of focusing that to go to the stars, they have tried to dumb it all down in the worst possible calculation I can imagine. And that's because they're devil run, folks. You can call it whatever you want. A spirit of cancer. I mean, you know, turn humanity loose. Don't, don't, don't clamp it down. And then they say, well... We're clamping it down because humanity will create a super weapon and blow us up. And then they're the ones, the globalists tried to blow up the atmosphere in the 60s. It's in Discovery Channel stuff with uh, the actor, yeah, Trinity and Beyond with, uh, with Shatner. But the point is, I already had read about it. But there they are, trying to blow the atmosphere up and set the world on fire. I mean, cuckoo, cuckoo. Let's jam in one more. Thank you, Peter. Ramon in Florida. Sorry to Aaron and Sam. Ramon, you're our tail gunner here at the end of the transmission. How you doing, Alex? Uh, I'm calling here for FEMA Region 4 down here in the United States of Nazi Germany. And uh, we spoke on the 28th of March, and uh, I predicted, well, I predicted from listening to you and a lot of other intelligent people that they'd be using the false flag to try to bring us down. And, oh, yeah, um, you could see the buildup for it, yeah, but, but they wouldn't do that. I mean, they're nice people.
Yeah, just like they wouldn't help in 93 to blow up the world trade and they wouldn't create, you know, Al-Qaeda back in the 80s. And, yeah, we know. But the reason why I'm calling the day is because I like to speak directly to the New World Order because I know you guys are listening. You got 30 seconds. Go ahead. We're not afraid of you. We're here to fight you to the end of time. It's, it's, it's going down. It's the final war. We're ready for you. We're here for whatever you got to bring. We're not scared. We're going to do whatever it takes to bring humanity back to where it started at. With God. So all you New World Order chumps that think you're taking us down, <laughs> you got another thing coming. God bless you. Got to end it there. Beautiful caller. Sorry to Aaron and Sam. He said it all. That's what I meant to say at the start of the show. They want to deny they're buying the bullets, the armored vehicles, the vaccine poisons, because they don't. The devil's biggest trick is that he didn't exist. Well, you know what? We know you guys are devils. We know you're cancer. We know your agenda. We know you're globalist. We know you hate liberty. You use America to set up world government while you destroy it. We're aware of you. We see you. And that's right. We're not going down without a fight, scum. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.